Hey guys, what's good? It's me, Jay Lee. You're watching Jay Lee Sees, and today, Jay Lee Sees The Walking Dead, Season 3, Episode 7. Now, a massive thank you to everyone who has liked, commented, and subscribed to my channel and my videos. And to all you lurkers out there, the ones that watch the video but don't comment, don't worry, I see you too. Well, no, I don't. But I recognise you and I appreciate you as well. That all being said, I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Let's get straight into this week's worth of episodes, starting with this episode. So before we start, I just want to let everybody know that the footage that we're about to see does not belong to me. It belongs to AMC. But, without further ado, episode 7. Lights, camera, pew, action. You don't even know why you're here, do you? No, but you have been kidnapped and duct tape to the chair. We went back for you. Ain't you thoughtful? We did. All of us. Rick, Daryl, T-Dog. Mmm, T-Dog. Is dead. Yeah, that big old spear chucker. The one I was pleading with. I'm sure T-Dog liked to bury the hatchet. Let bygones be bygones. He didn't make it. Yeah, bye, he gone. How about my baby brother? You can't tell me he's alive and then hold off on where he is. Well, they can if you put me in this kind of situation. I remember you. Yeah, you're the sneaky one. The one with nerve. You don't scare easy, do you? Now, I want to know where my brother is. Ooh. Oh my god, no. I want to know where the sheriff is. Oh, Glenn! You will get so told off for that. Oh, shit, sir. I want to know where you're hiding. Oh, can't you just lie about something? And then when he's off on his merry way, Chasing this bloody dead end that you sent him on, then you figure out how to escape. That's what I would do. I bet Rick is thinking, what in the world is going on on this day? I go from a phone call with dead people to now being surrounded by potentially not dead people. <laughs> She wasn't bit, don't worry, she was just shut up. <laughs> Hopefully Rick sees her skills and be like, I need this bitch in my life, having my back. <laughs> Is someone actually not gonna come and help her? I mean, I know she's a bloody stranger to you guys, but to me she ain't. Sean? Michonne gone. Yes, Carl! Guys, you are going to be glad you saved her because this woman, she is a fountain of information. She probably won't tell you anything because she don't talk a lot and she has a lot of mystery about her. Mm -hmm. But, get her comfortable enough, she might let slip some kind of info. Look at me, look at me. Who are you? It's alright. Hey, look. Hey. Michonne, you can kind of trust him. Unless you try something stupid first, alright? Rick. Rick, see, now she knows his name's Rick. <gasps> Zavl. What the this? I was just trying to fuck up your brother, sir. I didn't ask for your help. Doesn't matter. You got it anyway. Can't let you leave. You should be really grateful because you don't know this, but Rick does not let people stay usually. I know! So bloody random for you guys. Oh my god. Oh. I don't want to put a dampen on proceedings, but. By the way, Carol, they didn't really grieve for you that much. <laughs> I 
Oh yeah. She didn't make it. <laughs> yes, me sure. They're good people. I mean, Rick is a very questionable person, but he does try to keep him safe, I suppose. He doesn't have an ulterior motive, a hidden agenda, like every other fucking motherfucker in this show. <laughs> we can tend to that wound for you. Give you a little food and water and then send you on your way. But you're gonna have to tell us how you found us. And why you were carrying formula. <gasps> she brought the formula back. The plans were dropped by a young Asian guy. Yeah, and his white girl. With the pretty girl. What happened? They got kidnapped. Hey, these are our people. You tell us what happened. No! Don't, don't you ever touch me again. You better start talking. There's a town. Very. Woodbury. Oh! About 75 survivors. I think they were taken there. A whole town? A whole motherfucking town. This guy calls himself the governor. Oh, she's spilling all the tea. Yes. Has she recognized that Daryl is Mel's brother yet? Oh my days, Glenn! Just feed him some BS! Hey, we've been on the road. Not hiding in some dungeon. Rick, Shane, Dale, Jim, Andrea. He knows you're lying, Glenn. Oh, um, wait, no, I told you to lie, actually. He just caught you out in the first lie you gave. What you did for me. I had to. I know, and I'm sorry. No one should have to go through that. Boys. Daryl's been calling her ass kicker. Ass kicker. <laughs> yeah, that probably won't stay. Our first name was Judith. Do you think that's a good name? No. I think that's that's fine name. <laughs> Judith it is. That sounds like a fully grown adult person's name. I mean I know fully grown adults are once upon a time babies, but you know. Hello. Are we gonna find out the true intentions of this naughty professor? So what exactly? Could you cue up the first song on the record? Not to tell us what the fuck's going on, sir. I mean, yeah, okay. He asked if I could keep it playing while we wait. What are we waiting for? For him to die? Are we donating his body to science? Who is he? Alrighty! I want to imagine how I felt fighting my way off that roof. One hand. Mel, you are doing the most. Too much. Where's your group? Uh, uh, suit yourself. Uh, Glenn already told you they're gonna be on their way in a minute to come save him. Oh. <gasps> this is a joke. Glenn is able to survive this shit, then I don't know. But I'm probably very impressed and very happy. So what is Maggie doing while she's listening to all this commotion? Well done, Glenn. I believed in you this whole time. But now what? He'll reanimate. I'll ask the questions again. Record his responses. I need you to end the subject's reanimated state. He ain't gonna respond. He's gonna be a walker. These people really do believe that there's some sentience of the actual normal selves lingering deep within. But there ain't. Cues that will hopefully linger in his unconscious mind even after he's died. There is no unconscious mind, Milton. When they turn, they become monsters. Uh -huh. That's all. However they once were. 
Unless he's gonna prove us completely wrong and then that throws this show wide open once again. Oh Maggie, just stay quiet a little while longer. Help is on the way. <laughs> May I? Do what you want, mate. Just tell us what the fuck you're here for. I hate when people walk into a room and don't tell us their intentions of being in that room immediately. Hank up my man to a roof, force him to amputate his own hand. I don't know anything about that. She really don't. You'll be safe, I promise. Nah, look at that face. Sinister. Take off your shirt. Pardon? No. Yeah, fuck yourself. Or I'll bring Glenn's hand in here. What the fuck? Oh, you wait till Andrea hears about this. She's gonna be pissed off at you. This makes me super uncomfortable. What is going on? So, do not make me phone Andrew up. <gasps> oh no, I don't want to watch this. Oh, I didn't like that at all. That put me right on edge. Guys, why is it taking you so long to get to this city when Michonne was able to limp to you in no time? I know what you did for me. For my baby while I was working things out. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Down. Oh, God, there's a fair few of them. What are the odds that the prisoner gets murdered in this scene? In there. Come on. Get the door. Luckily, this little pop up bomb was there. <gasps> oh, my God, a human. Hello. I am a cop. I'll call the cops. How long have you been stuck in this little wooden shack, mate? Help! Help me! Help me! Don't open that door! <gasps> oh dear. Oh honey, Miss Sean, I'm against killing innocent people. You should have done that. You gotta be kidding. He's dead. Check the back. <laughs> It's clear. One, two, three. See, the fact that that prisoner was just like, you've got to be kidding me, and he had a problem with it, makes me think he is definitely um, destined to die in a sec. Anyone with any semblance of a moral compass gets murdered. Oh, here we go. Let's see how this one plays out. Your name is Michael Coleman. Nah. You were married to Betty like, Coleman. Is it Who is this bitch? Your children were Michael Jr. and Emily. Oh no, I don't know them. Did you see that? He responded. The fingers move. That could be enough. No, he can't raise his hand. It's that angle. I want to try again without the restraints. No. We may have tethered Milton Mammoth. Please raise your right hand. <laughs> see, sir. I bet he has to go at her. Like, why would you do that? I was trying to find out some information for my experiment and my research. Uh-uh. <sighs> yeah. I know. Drop it. Now, one of you is going to give up your camp. Rick. Please. 
I need you. <gasps> prison. Oh, you when stupid you bitch. I mean, you didn't really have a choice, so I am sorry, but I've just got too involved for a second. <laughs> Ten people. That's deep in the red zone. Our team's gonna get their revenge on you bitches. And that means a pretty sizable force has moved into our backyard. Blood is blood, right? Makes me wonder where your loyalties lie. But yeah, I suppose. Here. And the thing is, Daryl doesn't even know that his brother's in there. That's exciting. Unless Mel tries to kill Daryl to prove his point that he does belong as a would-be resident. started okay guys the episode is done and dusted let's talk about it so it didn't quite happen this episode but we are literally just on the perimeter of infiltrating this weird little town there's not a lot else in this episode that really needs to be addressed that hasn't already but I do want to talk about how much I'm in love with Glenn and Maggie and they had a really good probably not the right word they had a very strong, eccentric episode. Um, it had me so nervous in a lot of the points where Mel just left that walker to Glenn who was tied up to a chair and yet my little man, he still managed to find a way to get the upper hand. And then the governor with Maggie, that was such a weird, sketchy situation. And unfortunately, Maggie gave away a lot of information, but I don't know how much that is going to come into play Considering most of the information that she gave them um, isn't necessarily accurate at the moment. She's like, there's 10 people at the prison. Um, if you want them, go get them. Because they can't go get them. Because half of them are there outside the walls of Woodbury right now. Ready to get Glenn and ready to get Maggie back. They're going to bump into Andrea randomly. They're going to bump into Merle randomly. And like I said, I cannot wait for Rick and the governor to come face to face. Because even though I do not like Rich's mentality and approach to a lot of things, um, I really don't like the governor either. And I bonded more with Rick. So I would like to see these two headstrong men go face to face in a showdown. And if they end up both fucking each other up, I wouldn't be so mad. And I'm also really excited for Merle and Daryl to get together because we've actually not seen their chemistry and their relationship on screen. The only time they've been in a scene together is when Daryl was hallucinating him. So I'm in, I'm, I am excited to actually see them connect. And the governor did say to Merle, it's either us or blood. And then Mel was like, of course I'm going to choose you. But obviously he's going to say that to the motherfucker's face. And everything's going to change once he does see his brother, I'm sure. But I might be wrong. Who knows? I'm going to find out tomorrow when I continue watching. So if you want to be with me while I continue watching and you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Feel free to hit the subscribe. Even you lurkers out there. Remember, I gave you a shout out in the beginning of the video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And down in the comment section, I want to know... Did Maggie do the right thing by giving away too much information? I kind of felt like she didn't have a choice. But Glenn, he was well defiant. He was like, I ain't telling you shit. So I want to know what you would have done in that situation. Um, like I keep saying, I would not have even been alive to this point to find out how I would have been. Um, but I probably would have um, kept my mouth shut and be like, yes, you're actually going to do me a favour by putting me out of my misery. The world out there is fucked up. Yeah, but I want to know your opinions. And until tomorrow, stay safe out there.